All right, folks, welcome back. This is a new year and some new discussions. Uh, we're going to talk about major moves with seasonal tendencies. Now, I'm going to talk about specifically commodities in this lecture. Now, it's important to know that if some of you are hardline crypto traders or Forex traders, uh, there are seasonal tendencies in Forex. There are seasonal tendencies in the dollar index. There are seasonal tendencies in stocks. So try not to read so much into this lesson and think of it as only applying to the markets I'm going to refer to in its delivery. Okay, so understand a seasonal tendency is a roadmap. It's a generalization of what has happened in the past. And if there is some measure of repeating phenomenon, okay, in other words, if we think that the market is going to go up at a particular time of the year to a specific time of the year, and we measure it over the last five years, over the last 10 years, the last 15 years, the last 20 and 25 years, there are services out there, and I'll turn you on to one in this teaching that I have a lot of faith in myself personally, but it's important to note that, and I'm not saying this is going to be the case every single time you look at the marketplace. There are some certain caveats that have to be considered, and I'll briefly discuss those as we go along, but I'm gonna to try to keep this video short, because I know some of you have very short attention spans when it comes to my lectures, because you think I'm talking too much, but I'm just trying to give you an extra value and uh, insights that you would otherwise have to pay for elsewhere. So let's take a look at a dollar index chart to begin with. All right, so we're looking at the dollar index and I'm using tradingview.com, all right? So uh, you can find this information yourself. You can go pull up your own version of this chart and take a look at the things I'm referring to here. And it should be on par with what I'm showing in my charts. Now I'm going to refrain from showing any kind of real annotations until we get to the very specific market I want to talk about, but I'm going to talk about a few of them and review some of the potential opportunities that make themselves available each year in these markets. So I always begin my analysis with the dollar index, okay? And the reason why I do that is because I want to know if we are on a risk on or risk off environment. Now risk on would be where the market has the dollar index going lower, as we see here around July of 2020 to present. And that would allow or permit the likelihood of markets to rally or go higher. And that being like foreign currency against the dollar and also commodities. Because if the dollar is going lower, that is more or less inflationary for commodity prices. So they're going to see a, an appreciation in the cost of producing and or purchasing commodities. So if we can just simply understand that going forward, everything in this teaching will be very easy to follow along. If you're someone that's new to my channel or new to commodities or trading in general, you're probably going to want to watch other video series on this YouTube channel and it'll help fill in some of the gaps I'm certain that you have watching this. If the dollar index is going higher, that's going to be deflationary for commodity prices and also for foreign currencies. They're going to go lower in relationship to the higher prices in dollar. Now, if we have that risk on risk off scenario in mind, when dollars going lower, that's risk on. When dollars going higher, that's risk off. If we have this period of time when the market is clearly indicating that the dollar wants to go lower, that means we are on the watch for big moves on the upside. Okay, really big moves. One such big move this year was the soybean market. And I've been very vocal about that. My students know about that. And I've also tipped the community off in my YouTube channel. And if you look at that over here, I have a bunch of things that I've shared publicly here. Now, when I look at this, 
I can see that it doesn't really give me a specific date and I'm actually learning something as I do this video with you right now uh, I'm gonna include the actual date that I post it okay so um, I wish it would have given me a specific date but nonetheless it is what it is the uh, the thumbs up that's highlighted here just so you guys know I like to post the comment and then I wait for the first thumbs up and I'm usually the second thumbs up because it's my way of checking to make sure that it's viewable on your end because I've had members in the past say I can't see my post or you know the posts I make to the community tab they don't they, they're saying they didn't see it or they did say they couldn't see it so I usually wait for someone to do a thumbs up that means it's visible on your end as the audience and then I'm typically the, the second thumbs up so it's not me being conceited or loving myself it's just a way for me to know that okay that post has been seen it's public now and I can leave YouTube and go about my business somewhere else but uh, if you look at about a month ago I mentioned that if you take a look at the grain reports soybeans as I stated since June of 2020 was poised to continue the rally into 2021 and I state here corn will be next now notice there's no edit here like you see here is an edit it means I went in and I changed a typo or something like that here I'm telling you specifically a month ago that corn is going to be the next big rally okay it's going to go up why well if you look at here I'm telling you that China's buying everything it can and I give you the reasons I'm not going to read it you can see it here but I also talked about Bitcoin and I called 20,000 before Christmas um, and when I was on Twitter which I'm not now I also posted in July of 2020 I stated that uh, I felt that we would see Bitcoin 30,000 by the end of the year going into 2021 I was off by one day <laughs> So, sorry. <laughs> the next level I called for Bitcoin, and I'll let you scroll through. You can find this on your own. Um, I called 40,000 and went to like 42,000 something. And then it has recently uh, had some difficulties. So, I'm making calls here publicly because I've had people in the past make some derogatory comments about how I don't really put my neck out on the line say this is what I think is going to happen and I used to do that a lot on Twitter but I don't have Twitter anymore so this has replaced my Twitter and you can follow along and see what I'm suggesting in my expectation now I don't do everything but I toss out once in a while something for you guys to study and we're going to take a look at the corn market here in relationship to the soybean market and we're going to use that dollar bearishness from July as a context to anticipating higher prices on every market I'm going to cover in this teaching so let's move on over to soybeans first all right so here's the soybean market and in June of this past year uh, I was warming all my students up to the idea that we were going to eventually make a run above these highs here and that we would have a pretty big bull market going into the commodity market because of the dollar index being bearish now some of you that are in my mentorship are getting really nervous right now because you're thinking I'm teaching mentorship when all I'm doing is talking about what you've experienced before it happened so please don't send me emails okay I know some of you are highly protective and I love you all for that but I want to kind of teach something broad brush and I'm really not doing harm to what you are participating in so just give me the liberty here to be able to be a teacher outside of mentorship too because it's why this channel exists the there is no mentorship joining now by the way so we have closed the doors do not send me emails and it is what it is this is not a sales pitch it's not meant for you to hey come in and join learn how to do this everyone that's already emailed me if you've emailed me and we haven't gotten to you yet that's fine we'll get to you and we'll consider you but anyone new we're not taking anybody else in so it's too many people it is what it is and we're done but if you look at what has transpired since june of last year we've had this extremely handsome price run on soybeans so if you were to use the we'll say eight dollars and eighty cents a bushel okay right in here 
you're not getting the best entry here, you're not getting the best entry here. But from 880 up to 1080, that's $10,000 per contract. Okay, that's $20,000 if it goes to 1280. Now if it goes to 1480, that's another $10,000. How many Bitcoin moves have you seen in your lifetime as a crypto trader? The one we just recently seen and the big run up in 2017, right? I called 2017 and I called the top. Then I mentioned many times that you know new traders that got exposed to crypto feels like that's the only market that uh, traders could have gotten wealthy on. And I kind of taught this back in 2017 and 2018 and 2019. Every time I get a new student, the, the first question comes to mind is, you know, do you regret missing Bitcoin? Because I've been very public and state that I don't trade crypto. I didn't trade Bitcoin. But whenever I make my calls public, you know, obviously it comes with a great deal of kickback if it, if it opposes the view of a certain group of my audience members. I don't do this to upset anyone purposely, but you know, I get more requests for me sharing what I think is going to happen than people coming back and saying, I really wish you wouldn't have said that. So I try to be as open as I possibly can and tell you what I think is going to happen, where I think it's going to go. And for the most part, why I think it's going to go there. And every call that I've made publicly, you're welcome to look at and weigh in the balances. But these are big moves that take place in the commodity market and you don't need a bitcoin move to you know define wealth because what you see here can be the same thing if not more than what you saw in bitcoin this past what seven months or yeah six or seven months so the same amount of money that one could have made in that Bitcoin run, you could do in this right here. And I stated this very market when I was making the case and argument with the crypto traders that were saying I should be uh, regretting not being a part of the largest bull market in history. Well, there's always a big bull market. There's always a big mega trade. Okay, every year the markets create them. And I tried to state this before that I have tools that help me ferret those out. And one of the things that I look for is a seasonal tendency. If a seasonal tendency indicates that the market's likely to go up by itself doesn't mean anything. But if we can find a time when the market is bullish and a seasonal tendency is suggesting that historically it usually goes up, then we have something to work with. And then it's a matter of just waiting for market structure to get in sync with those two underlying premise. If the market is bullish and the market is showing a bullish seasonal tendency, we wait for the market to give us a bullish market structure. So we have multiple things in here. And I've talked about soybeans before. Uh, so I'm not going to try to you know, redo that here and waste time. But we, we see markets making runs like this a lot in hindsight but it's altogether something different when you're able to see it outline it before it happens and call it with you know a large degree of appreciation on the upside so we're seeing a huge amount of potential price run that would otherwise be either ignored or not expected there's a lot of people on youtube that are claiming they got the signals at work they got the, the calls that make the money. They got this and they got that. And they're pointing to these tiny little itty bitty fluctuations in the marketplace. Tiny little fluctuations. And I outlined for free, gave it to you on a silver platter. 30,000 points in Bitcoin. Publicly given to you. If you look at the soybean market, I showed you that one as well. And a month ago, I tipped you off with corn. So let's take a look at corn. All right, we're going to go to corn and we'll use the nearby contract, which is March 2021. Okay, so here you go. A month ago, right 
there. Okay. Corn. Going to go higher. It's going to be the next big move. That's in the community tab on my YouTube channel. Unedited. Okay. Um, I got a lot of flack from people saying that I've used rented servers, that I've done fraud, that I cheat people, I lie to people, I give them a false impression that I can trade, and nobody's ever seen me call markets before it happens. And it's just, that still finds its way in discussions in certain corners on the internet. And I have been giving you million dollar maker moves, okay? I'm giving you the big moves because I can. And I'm sharing them publicly. I'm not selling them. I'm not making you come into my mentorship to get them. I'm giving you for free because I can afford to do that. I don't need to have people pay me for signals. I'm interested in teaching you how to find these things. And honestly, everything on this YouTube channel shows you how to find these moves. But you don't want to listen to the discussions and the lecture points that are boring. And it's one thing to see people go out and take my content and just give me some latitude here. I got to make this point. There's a lot of people out here taking my stuff and making YouTube videos about it because times are tough right now. And they want to try to get a group, get over a thousand subscribers since they start making some ad revenue because they need a hustle because either they lost their job or they're paranoid because everything that's going on this year and past year rather, and they need to make money. I understand that. Okay. But when you are trying to teach something that you don't know, you're doing more harm to the audience. And if you think you know what I can do and what I teach, then you should be able to pull out these market moves before they happen to not talk about them in hindsight. That's the difference between me. Everybody says, oh, ICT's a scalper. He's an intraday trader. You know, he's Mr. 10 pips, 20 pips. No, but I can do more with that type of trading than anybody else that's trading these larger big position trade swings because I can parlay that up and have velocity behind the equity. But you don't need to trade a lot. If you listen to what I teach, you can sit back and be very passive in investment and capture these big moves. We're going to assume that you were in here around that $4.20 a bushel and went above today $5.20 a bushel. That is a $5,000 price move per contract. Now, it took a month to get it, but if you would have had, say, I don't know, 10 call options, you wouldn't have had the full exposure required for margin to do the trade you could have done some call options and whatever you paid for the option that would be the amount of risk total plus commission that you would have looked at as incurred risk five grand for a month some of you probably don't make that in a month i know when i was working as a younger man i wasn't making that much money now we're talking about back in the 80s <laughs> But uh, 1980s, <laughs> it's it sounds funny to, to say it like that. And I'm laughing because I think about how my son was asking me earlier before I made this video. He asked me, he goes, Dad, um, what cool cars were there back in the 1900s? And he it, to hear him say it that way made it sound like I'm even older than I really am. <laughs> the The idea of looking for these types of price moves and seeing how much is available on one position okay if you can find trades like this and it can present moves like this or like what i showed in the soybean market those types of moves if you can find them and ferret them out over time they can make you wealthy now the problem is this like it was for me when i first started in 1992 i read a book Ken Roberts, his commodity course, and you all probably heard this enough. I'm not going to you know, beat it up you know, even more. But I felt that I was going to be one of those success stories, and I was going to make a fortune in my first year, and I was going to do everything the book said. And in my first trade, I lost 50% of the account. I've made no bones about it. It is what it is. 
And even my students that first come to my YouTube channel or they traded other markets and uh, they've tasted pain and loss because they don't really know what they're doing. Then they see what I do in these videos and it opens their eyes to what they did not know. And they can go into the old data and say, wow, I can really see that this is making perfect sense. That's the difference between understanding what the markets really do versus what the markets did and then write a book about it. You know, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't help. Okay. If all these books were able to help people make money, then they wouldn't need to make more books. The, the people that made books a hundred years ago would have been enough. There would be no reason to make another book. So it's this trap that you all follow. And I did it too. Trust me, I did it. I wasted a fortune on buying books and courses when I first started. And honestly, none of that crap worked. None of it. It caused me to lose more and feel even more insecure about myself. And it, it was like an endless circle of always learning but never coming to the truth. When I got exposed to how the markets really book, it changed everything. And I went back in and turned everything else upside down and it started working. These ideas here, I'm just going to make it very easy for you. If you go to Amazon and you buy the book, How I Made a Million Dollar Trading Commodities Last Year by Larry Williams. Okay, um, let's go over to Amazon and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so here's the book I'm talking about. And you've heard me mention this before. So this is where you can go and get it. Notice that I'm not giving you a link. I'm not doing an affiliate program. I'm not trying to get paid for you making a purchase. I'm just freely giving you the information. If you don't want to buy the book, then don't buy the book. But this book was one of the first books that I bought that made sense and made me money. So the things I like about this book, and let's see if it can pull it up here, table contents, this chapter here, chapter four, where he says my million dollar fundamental system and going into this area here, he basically covers all of the most important things that make commodity markets move on a large scale. Okay, so all of these things in your chapter four, that to me is the real shining chapter in it. Doesn't mean that there's other parts in this book that isn't interesting or, or noteworthy, but there are things like he talks about the phases of the moon and the influence of buying and selling on that. I don't subscribe to any of that, but I'm not here to beat him up because he was my first mentor. So and I'm not trying to say that Ken Roberts wasn't a mentor because he was a mentor because you know that was the very first book I read but it lost money everything I did with it was completely I abandoned everything I learned from him and the next mentor I had was Larry Williams and this book was highly influential now if you go through this book you will see the effects and the impression that Larry had on me and you can also see I amped up, especially if you're in uh, the mentorship level stuff. Um, and again, I hate to say it that way because it sounds like I'm dangling. I don't want anyone asking to join because I'm not taking anyone new. I have to keep putting that in there. I'm sorry. But if the students that, like if we were all in a big room, okay, we were all like at a, a live seminar. And I said, okay, who's here that's in mentorship? Raise your hand. And you'd see whatever you know, number of people would be there, raise their hand. And I'd say, okay, who has gone through this book I'm talking about here? And they would raise their hand. And then I'd say, okay, now raise your hand if you've seen me amplify and fill in a lot of the things for precision-based rules with this information. Because this was the foundation I started with. You know, I started with this. And I built on it. And I built on it. And built on it. And... It just further solidifies the importance of having a solid foundation. If you're going into this with like Elliott Wave, okay, or uh, Harmonic Patterns, you know, that is a niche. It's a gimmick. It's a stylized 
perception. It's not objective. It's not. It's subjective. This chapter four, that is objective. Okay, and if you read it, you'll you'll know exactly what I'm referring to, what makes it objective. It's rooted in real market truths that are either present in the marketplace or they're not. It's binary. Whereas if we had a collection of people that traded harmonic patterns or if we had a collection of people that traded Elliott Wave, they would have a difference of opinion. I'm certain of it if we were giving them the same market. And that is what highlights the, in my mind, the lunacy in following that kind of stuff. And don't get me wrong. I wasted years doing both of those things. Okay. I I know about both of them. It isn't like I read a book and, you know, I never dabbled in it. I did all that stuff. I've done point and figure charts. I've done everything. I've done everything out there as as far as trading goes. And honestly... All of it is flawed because it doesn't start on the basis of having real logic behind it. It's based on a pattern by itself. They go in looking for patterns or or wave counts versus understanding what it is that sets the market up for a move higher or lower and where it should draw to. Now, Larry doesn't do that, but Larry gives you the three primary rules and tools that he looks for that sets up these big million dollar maker well i shouldn't say million dollar maker but uh fortune makers okay um what's a fortune to me you know if it makes fifty thousand dollars you know that's a small fortune you know i don't look at for fifty thousand dollars the same way i did when i was in 1992 but you know if i lost fifty thousand dollars i'd you know i'd want it back you know it's it's a meaningful amount of money to me and to most of you listening that's probably a significant amount of money as well especially if you're a new student and or never traded profitably you would love to have that type of windfall victory in trading if you're looking for a book to give you a real solid foundation to understand why a market should go up or go down this chapter right here in this very book I think that you should subscribe to what's being shown in that chapter. I don't get anything for this. I don't get a kickback. Larry doesn't know I'm even doing it. And I mean it. I've said this book many times over the last 10 years or 11 years now, talking about things from you know books that were influential or books that were worth your time reading. This is a 1970s book. 1970s. I was a child at the time when this was uh, published and, and, and put in print. And it's still effective today. Why? Because it's rooted on things that work. And the man made money with it. Not a little bit of money. He made a million dollars. And then he did it again in 1987 for people that doubted him, didn't believe he really made money with it. And he won the World Cup Robins Contest for futures trading in 1987 and still holds 11,000 percent as the highest uh, percentage gain in that contest history so if you take this information and go back into a market like this you'll see a lot of those things that he's teaching exist in this market here okay and before we had this big extrapolated price move here i told you in my community tab on my YouTube channel right here a month ago corn will be next and I gave you the fundamental reasons why okay so uh, when it comes to fundamental data I do consider it when it comes to livestock like feeder cattle live cattle lean hogs they're all commodity markets I look at it in regards to the grain reports apart from that I do not consider fundamental data at all. But if I'm trading agricultural markets, which are commodity markets, as I just mentioned, um, then I'm going to consider it. And other markets like the food groups, like coffee, cocoa, and sugar. If we go into, if we look at coffee, this is kind of like the, the, the heart of the teaching here today. If you look at this price fractal, 
it is something that I have taught many times with the medium of Forex. And I'll give you a minute, pause the video before I put the annotations up, but try to look at what you think you see in this price action. And then when you're ready, unpause the video and you'll see my annotations in the discussion going forward. Okay, we're gonna add the annotations now. All right, so we are looking at coffee, okay? And there is a seasonal tendency for coffee to rally about the second week or third week of July. I want you to consider the likelihood of mid-July being a seasonal tendency for coffee to go higher. Now, think about what I showed you on the dollar index. In July, it was going lower. It created an important high and then just fell out of bed and went lower. That, again, sets the stage for markets to go higher in the commodity market, just like it does in Forex. So from having a macro perspective and looking at things seasonally, blending those things together, it gives us framework to find really big moves. You don't have to be an intraday trader. You don't have to worry about the power three on a daily candle. If you don't have time to do that, if you don't have the life framework that promotes that type of trading, you don't need to do it. Don't feel like you have to be an intraday trader. Don't feel that you have to be a short-term trader. If you look at these types of price moves and you think, wow, you know, I could be a participant in something like that, that makes sense. I don't want to have to be relying on making a decision each day, buying and selling, buying and selling, because that takes a certain type of personality that isn't really everyone's cup of tea. Now, I started with this type of trading, swing trade, position trading. I started that way, and it was like pulling teeth. I just couldn't endure it. I didn't want to deal with it. It was too slow. Doesn't mean I can't do it, technically. It just means I can't submit to it from a personality standpoint but the analysis concepts that i use this helps me frame every type of trade that i'm comfortable with which is day trading intraday and short term Th that's my forte that's where i excel and i can find lots of those types of day trades short term trades or swing trades intraday in the overall price model that's being shown here now what am i actually showing here well if you look at the relative equal highs over here you know this is a buy side liquidity pool and the market will likely want to go back to that point we also have a consolidation that leaves the consolidation comes back up to the consolidation in here and drops lower at another level of decline hits a important level 100 and then rallies breaks a short-term high here so we have a, a shift in market structure so when the market comes back down into a bullish order block which is this down close candle right there we have an optimal trade entry. So we're using the lowest low to the highest high, projecting that up, that gives us two and a half standard deviations and above the buy side liquidity pool. So that means about $1.34 per pound for coffee as an upside objective back here in July, mid-July, when the seasonal tendency for coffee is bullish market rallies up it touches these relative equal highs sells off a little bit goes back into a bullish order block here and we have another optimal trade entry that sends it up again to a target above the buy side liquidity pull resting at relative equal highs so if you look at the total range i'm going to take this off here if you look at the total range from this run here to here you can't say that you would be a buyer here but you can assume that you're close to this area here, not at this very low at 101, which is the best case area for a low and the best case area for an exit or uh, high is the 135.65. So inside this range, the best case, which is impossible, would be 34.65 handles, okay? Or $375 times 34.6 because the point value for coffee is three dollars and 75 cents per point and every handle and what's a handle from like for instance 134 to 135 that's one full handle that would be represented by 375 dollars that's 100 points or one handle price move 
in this case, the price moved $12,993.75 per contract from here to here. All of this is a market maker buy model with a seasonal tenancy mid-July, with the dollar index selling off in July, which we were looking for ourselves as, as my group was uh, following along. And this type of price move here is what I teach. I teach these types of moves. I don't say buy here, sell there, but I guide you. And every year I take my students back in and say, okay, this is the seasonal tendency. This is what we were looking for. This is what we called in dollar index. It sets the tone for all these other markets. I point to the markets to have these potential extrapolated price moves. And we've looked at corn. There's $5,000. We've looked at soybeans, $20,000, $30,000 there. We have Bitcoin, 30,000 points. I'm not sure what that would equate to you in terms of dollars. But these are moves that are not small. They're very significant. They're major moves. And if your tools can help you ferret out these types of price action moves, every single year, this is where the majority of your focus should be. But you will not find them if you're just lazily going through the charts looking for any old pattern for the pattern's sake. You have to have the logic behind it. So notice what I've combined here. I've combined a market maker buy model, which is what I teach even on this YouTube channel for free. Big round number, $1 per pound for coffee. And I'll let you go out to the higher time frame charts. You can do that on your own and see what $1 mark looks like in hindsight. And so you can see a big uh, support level around there. And also if you use the um, KC, well, let's just do it. KC and then use the front current month use this one here, KC number one exclamation. You click on that and you'll see that we have this down close candle prior to this run up. There's your order block. All it's done was worked off of that. Went right into it here and created your optimal trade entry and then rallied. Now you have to use the trading months contract when you're looking at commodities. Whereas this is just a, a cumulative chart of all of the, the nearby current front month contracts. Right now, the front contract month for coffee is March, 2021. Prior to March 21, it was December, 2020. And then prior to that, it was September, 2020. So these contracts expire in the commodity market. Forex, you don't have that issue, okay? but. In futures or if you're trading commodity markets you have to be aware of that so if you're looking at over here we don't have those pretty easy to see relative equal highs like we see in the March contract here see that so you have to look at what's available in the price action but you all know the market maker buy model you understand the optimal trade entry because that's the flagship pattern here in this channel. And you understand order blocks because I've introduced them publicly here. And we know that a run on relative equal highs is the draw on liquidity. That's a standard procedure that I've taught very publicly here on this channel. And it's caught fire and everybody's talking about it now. And that's wonderful. I just wish that the folks that were doing that would just make a reference and say, hey, look, you know, I picked this up from... ICT and you'll get more respect from me by doing that. It doesn't mean go and take everything I have and teach it all over again, but I know that this was going to be popular when I gave it out. And it's just unfortunate. There's a lot of people trying to glory hound and take credit for something they didn't earn or work for. So these are pretty big moves. And every single year we have these types of moves. So you don't need one of these types of moves. Okay. I mean, people waited around for years for this to occur in here. I called 6,000 to 20 and then changed gears before 20 and said, no, it's not going to go. So at 19.7, I said it's going to go to 6,000. 
And then from when we got to 6,000, I said it was going to go to 3,000. And I failed to be accurate there. It went to like 3,400 or 3,200. I can't recall exactly where it was. But the point is, is it eventually dropped down to well, something in here. I'm not sure exactly what the low was. Yeah, 32 something or 31. Yeah, 31.22 in there. And then we had this little run here in 2019. And everybody thought that was going to run above here. And I was like, no, I don't think it's going to happen. And we tanked here during the pandemic. And then that extreme set the stage for the low. And then from that point, all the way up to where we went to 42 something. Where is it at? 40... Forty-two thousand, and that was it. And then we fell out of bed. So it dropped ten thousand points in short order. In here, does it want to go lower? I don't know. To me, it doesn't have a seasonal tendency yet, so it doesn't fit this discussion. But I'm trying to draw a contrast. And please don't take this as me kicking sand in the face of crypto traders. Okay, I'm not doing that. I've done it in the past. <laughs> okay, I'm not. I'm not trying to say it, that I didn't do that in the past because I did. But all I'm trying to remind you is that big market moves did, weren't invented by crypto. Okay, there are fortune making moves occurring every single year for those individuals that know how to find them, and that's why people like myself used to have a lot of fun reading people saying that you know. Everybody else that isn't trading crypto can't catch big, huge windfall price moves like it created in 2017 and 2019. And now, obviously, what was seen in 2020 going into 2021. There's a way to find these big moves. And I gave you the foundation that I started with. Now, that's not all that I do. I, I put a lot of structure on top of that foundation that's unique to me. It's not Wyckoff, okay? It's not supply and demand. It's not all those things that people like to say it is because they want to use those ta those name tags when they're teaching my content. And you hear them say order block. You hear them say breaker. Those are terms that I invented. I invented those terms. They are, they're coined by me. So when I hear them, and if my students hear them, right away, you know, you just know that this is a derivative of what I have been teaching and it's just it's offensive to see people do that and not give credit where it's due because you didn't endure all the hardships all the pain the loss monetarily family friends everything insanity in, in, in many instances to get this so hopefully you can now think about how seasonal tendencies and i gave you one in this lesson here coffee is one that if you go back and look at your data now here's what's going to happen i'm already going to predict this okay you're going to hear in certain circles if you are part of one that has the uh conversation of ict coming up once in a while uh, they're going to go into the charts and they're going to look for times where in july mid-july coffee didn't go up it's going to go down well you got to look at what the market's been doing ahead of july if it's bullish going into July, that's your indication that it, this is a good strong seasonal tendency for coffee. And there are times where if you look at coffee, and some of you are like, I ain't never trading coffee. Why does this guy keep talking about this, this market? If you look at coffee on a, I'll do a weekly chart, okay? And you can see we've had some spikes and such Okay, but you want to study, go back as far as the data will permit it. But looking at all this right here, is this market bullish or bearish? It's obviously bearish. So are you going to be likely to anticipate a mid-July run higher in coffee in this instance? Here's the thing. It can happen, but it's most likely not going to happen. Okay, is that very clear for you? If the market's bullish, like it's been here, then in July... There you go. There's July right there. It's going to run higher. 
Boom. Now, if you look at something that's bearish, let's find uh, July and there you go, mid July. Now we get we have a little bit of a run, but look how fast it gives up the ghost and goes lower. You see that? There's a difference between knowing what you're talking about and just trying to look for something to say it doesn't work. That's what trolls do. That's what critics do. Here's another area, bearish um, July right here, mid July there. Okay. Ahead of that, is it bullish or bearish? It's been going lower. So is the seasonal tendency likely to send coffee higher on that year? No. And look what happened. It fell out of bed even more. So if you look at a time when we had a break in market structure here, we have mid-July right there, right there. It dropped a little bit and then dropped again. So it was a break in market structure, but has it really made a bullish move? Not yet. It's still in transition. And here, same thing. We're going to go to a July. And that's last year. And there you go. So I'll counsel you to go back and look at all the times when coffee was bullish and when it was bearish. Okay, here's a nice area where it's been bullish, right? July, mid-July, right there. Bam. Higher. Now, we had reached a level up in here, and I'll let you look at the higher time frame charts and study it, but here's July that year. And it rallies. doesn't take up the high, but that's a nice rally. But then it falls out of bed because we hit an important level here and I'll let you go back and look at what that is historically using a monthly chart and I'm really doing you a disservice by trying to go through some of them but I'm just giving you the argument that some of my critics you know the thumbs down crew <laughs> they like to thumbs down my video the uh, which I love I love that because it makes me smile who can look at videos like this where I'm literally giving you lottery ticket winning numbers that work over and over and over again okay for free i'm doing this for free there's no sales pitch you can't join my mentorship now i just love doing this and if you like these kind of lessons and you find it useful to you or inspiring you know, just give it a thumbs up. It doesn't cost you anything. Just click the thumbs up and there it is. It's done. Uh, why do I want that to happen? Because I want this channel to be bigger than it is. Because there's a lot of people out here on YouTube that are misinforming people with things that don't work. And the trading community could really use a breath of fresh air. And everybody that's came into my mentorship, that's it. There's no more sales pitch. There's no more 2022, 20, 20, nothing. Like I'm done. I'm trying to get all the mentorship teaching done. I'm getting all the payment stuff done. And then I'm going back to being who I was before 2016 in August when I started this mentorship. It doesn't mean I'm not going to continue with my mentorship group and give them private teachings. It's just, I don't want to be focusing on this. I just want to go back to doing it relaxed and have time to do like I'm doing here. If you couldn't afford the mentorship, just know that I'm still going to present lessons here i'm not going to teach the same level obviously for those that join my mentorship that would be unfair and be unreasonable but there is a plethora of wisdom in these videos and if you've only watched them one time you didn't get it all you have to go through it a few times and take notes and then study some charts and then you'll find out that you've seen something that if you go back and listen to the videos again it'll mean more to you and it'll feel just like a new video was given to you and it's the same video i gave you from the beginning it's just they're very dense there's a lot of like this video there's a lot of things and nuggets in it that if you learn a little bit more with practice you'll appreciate the things that i've said that would otherwise have been glossed over by you by your attention just not being dialed in because you don't know the importance of the things i'm saying but for those individuals that have been a commodity trader, maybe some of you are futures traders and you've traded 
commodity markets. And maybe you traded coffee before and you never were aware of something like this. This is something that you can plan and predict months in advance. So when we get to July, if the market's been bullish, you can anticipate something like this unfolding. Now, obviously it doesn't give you an entry pattern. It doesn't give you an exit pattern. It doesn't give you the stop loss, but I'm teaching you a foundational idea, which is important. You have to have an understanding of why a market should even be doing anything at all. Just because you think you see something harmonic or you think you see something that's an Elliott wave based idea or even a supply and demand idea doesn't mean anything by itself. Just like an order block by itself means absolutely nothing. You have to have some context and you can't get any better as a context than having a seasonal impact behind a market move that has happened historically over and over and over again. And you can see it. You can visually see it. And coupling that when it's bullish, and there's lots of seasonal tendencies. There's other seasonal tendencies for coffee for it to go down specific times of the year. And there's other times when it's predisposed to go up too. And the same premise, you go into it looking for what the market was, bullish or bearish, going into that specific seasonal tendency. And by blending that with market structure, and are we in a risk on or risk off environment? That goes back to the dollar index. If you're, if you're expecting a buy signal in commodities, but you don't see a weaker dollar, you're probably looking at a market that isn't going to pan out for you. Doesn't mean it's always like that. It just means that the probability has shifted to a very low probability in your favor versus if you were expecting a move higher in a commodity market and the dollar index was bearish and you can see it going lower, then you have a risk on scenario because dollars going lower and that other market that would be in a normal perspective, it would be an inverse expectation. So dollar lower commodities higher. So there's this relationship of macro. And I, I talked a little bit about that and I'll take you to the post on my community tab. Now, this is the post I did today. And again, today is January 12th, 2021. And I did a post like this earlier this morning. And I talked about the importance of using seasonal tendencies and it's the the main thing i think everyone should try to focus on because there are specific times of the year that you should be focusing on one side of the marketplace and not the other it doesn't mean that you abandon the other side of the marketplace because what's really interesting and i'm going to finalize this video with this point if there is a time when the market is seasonally bullish, you can look at the seasonal tendency as a way of timing the other direction because the markets find a way to punish those individuals that look for these types of patterns and they don't exist. And I'll say it like this. If you're bullish on the market and the seasonal tendency is bullish and the market structure is bullish, then you have a high probability buy with the dollar being bearish. Okay. If you are bearish on a market and the market structure is bearish and the dollar index is bullish then you have high probability in your favor if you see a bullish seasonal tendency and we'll use coffee as a example here if we have this seasonal tendency mid-july and the market's been bearish going into that mid-july time period we don't look for a buy we would look for a short-term rally to sell short into and then probably see a better uh, price delivery on the downside as a result because the seasonal tendency would not be there and that gives us many times what i mentioned here a departure from the norm in price action it tends to incite excitement in price action and or, or in opportunities so it's far more important for you to know this than an entry pattern because it gives you the foundation to why a market should have a big move because if you're in trading or trying to get into trading just to get 10 pips 20 pips as a forex trader 
okay, or try to make 25 pips as a weekly objective, which is what I kind of like teach people to aim for in the beginning. I think that's a reasonable uh, objective. It's not high and lofty. It's something that I think that could be easily obtained. And you could still make a career off of that, as crazy as it may sound. But I don't want you thinking that that's all you can do with what I give you here on this YouTube channel. You could literally turn this into whatever you want it to be. You want to be a big swing trader catching mega trades? Well, this is one way of going into it. Now, notice I didn't even talk about commitment to traders. You notice that? Did you also notice that I didn't talk about breakers or mitigation blocks you see what I'm referring to there I have a lot of moving parts but you're able to take what makes sense to you that resonates with you and say okay I'm gonna use these things that make up my model but if it doesn't have things that are rooted in market truths you're not going to see those things pan out for you it doesn't make a difference the buzzwords the cool little names the things that you see me show you in your charts doesn't make a difference unless it's rooted and founded in rooted in a market truth and what is a market truth the markets will move based on a higher time frame premise and when we're referring to agricultural markets like foods and grains they are fundamentally driven by supply and demand factors those markets have real supply and demand Every other market out there is manipulated. Commodities are a real market that has supply and demand factors that govern them. They are the world's grocery store. So they have a real value. Like corn is always going to be worth something. But your share of Tesla could be worth zero two years from now. As crazy as that might sound, I'm not saying it's, that's what's going to happen. But Tesla stocks, you know, the shares, there's no real reason to think that there's value behind that or that it would be in perpetuity worth something. It doesn't mean that. But it's viewed that it has that value right now. But corn will never go to worthlessness. It's a food. It'll always have value. And in times of turmoil and what I anticipate going forward, there's going to be a shortage of food. And that shortage of food is going to put so much supply and demand pressure on these grains. And that's why you're seeing these big extrapolated price moves. Why? Because it's fundamentally driven. So if you're looking for supply and demand, and you want to trade supply and demand, you can't find a better way of doing it than trading commodities. Period. That's real. It's real supply and demand. There's no real supply and demand with a currency. It's all manipulated. And in the crypto, it's manipulated too. Bottom line is this. Don't think that you have to worry about making money in these tiny little intraday fluctuations. The same tools and premise that I teach with these intraday can be applied to the larger daily charts. And if I would have just told you that this chart here for corn, if I told you that was a, a, an hourly chart or a 15 minute chart and didn't tell you what market it was, it, you wouldn't have known any different because price is price. But knowing where these big moves come from and putting your neck out on the line, I do that. And if I don't know what I'm talking about, I would fall on my face miserably. And you keep seeing me pointing to the next big moves, pointing to the next big moves, because I have almost 30 years of experience doing this. I don't want to steer you wrong. I don't want to see you fail. I'm inspired by your excitement and your enthusiasm. It motivates me. It keeps me going because it allows me to relive moments just like you are having right now. I went through that. When you want to quit, I went through that dozens of times. When you feel like you hit a home run because you got more understanding and you can't sleep and you're excited. I've been there. I know what that feels like. And it's amazing. But nobody around you is going to understand that excitement because they think what you're doing or trying to learn is nonsense. It's a pipe dream to them. 
But I know I went through that. I had all the adversity and everyone around me saying the same things. It's a waste of time. Don't believe any of that. Don't listen to that stuff. Stop talking about what you're planning on doing and just do it. Don't share your dreams with other people because they're going to tell you, don't bother. Who wants to hear that? So dig into your charts, dig into the videos that you find on this YouTube channel, start studying, make 2021 the year that you've framed out a model that makes sense to you. Doesn't have to have all the moving parts that's available, but something that makes sense to you that's rooted in why a market should go up or down and where it should reach for logically. I teach that here on this YouTube channel. And if you put the time into studying it, I promise you will find something that you can't find elsewhere and at least for free. So until I talk to you next time, be safe and good luck and good trading.